a late breaking development with Stephen Dye's Tubbs. The FNM, DLP, I blame them! And DNA, all with rallies as election day creeps closer. We will hit six million visitors for the first time in history. And tourism numbers showing promise. The Bahamas tonight starts now. Covering the islands of the Bahamas, ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news is brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. It's great to have you with us for the Bahamas Tonight National Report. I'm Clint Watson reporting. Despite the outcry, national crime statistics are showing a drop in most criminal activities across the Bahamas. A release issued today by the Royal Bahamas Police Force is showing a drop in figures for murder, housebreaking and stealing. The figures cover a four month period ending on Tuesday. 40 murders have been recorded for the year compared to 42 for the same period last year. So far, there have been 932 housebreakings compared to 1102 last year. Cases of rape and unlawful sexual intercourse are also down for the period. However, armed robberies up at 347 compared to 333 last year. Stealing from vehicles is showing the highest increase at 830 so far this year compared to last year's number of 740. The government delivering on a promise to launch closed circuit television as part of the crime fighting initiatives in the Bahamas. After introducing new legislation to impact the crime wave, a bold step was taken today to introduce a multi-million dollar project that is expected to have far reaching benefits. LaDon Davis has more on the historic step. It was in its infancy stage some 12 years ago and now CCTV is finally here to not only protect Bahamians but to fight the war on crime. Today the Ministry of National Security signed a $4.6 million contract with Low Security Limited, a Bahamian based company which has already expanded its security expertise in the Cayman Islands and the United States with positive results. Minister of National Security Tommy Turnquest says 243 cameras will be deployed from Augusta Street to Mackey Street and one mile south of Bay Street. Mr. Turncrest says signs will also be erected to identify cameras. Mr. Turncrest says officers are fully equipped with the appropriate manpower to use the network and to fight crime. This initiative will go a long way in complementing and in some instances supplementing the efforts of the Commissioner of Police and the almost 3,000 men and women of the Royal Bahamas Police Force who risk their lives daily to ensure our country is safe. Today marks the beginning of the government's commitment to ensure that closed-circuit television networks are strategically placed in all areas of concern on the island of New Providence, and ultimately those in Grand Bahama and the other family islands. <coughs> Representative of Low Security Limited, Darren Farkerson, says CCTV is a cutting-edge tool that has reduced murders and other crimes by 25% since its inception. Mr. Farkerson says CCTV network is equipped with 60 days of video storage and 30 frames per second and will detect the identity of suspicious human behavior. Executive Vice President of the Bahamas Hotel Association, Frank Camito, says the launch of the CCT project in the Bahamas is a good idea and is long overdue. He says during a survey conducted in the Bahamas some four years ago, it was determined that after Bahamians had no objections, it was in all systems go from there and strategic plan was put in place. Phase one of the CCTV project will go live by the end of July and training of command center monitoring staff will commence in late September. LaDawn Davis, ZNS News. Well, it's an issue now making its way to the headlines during the heated political campaign. A political party's leadership possible involvement in a company seeking to drill for oil in the Bahamas. Last night in Grand Bahama, Prime Minister Hubert Ingram settled rallying supporters as he prefaced his remarks with a sober tone, saying a serious issue has surfaced with the PLP that should cause all voters to take a deeper look. Referring to the need for the next government to be transparent and accountable, not scandal-ridden, the Prime Minister says PLP leader Perry Christie has questions to answer to the Bahamian people regarding his recent disclosure of professional connection as a paid consultant with a foreign oil company, which is seeking approval to drill in Bahamian waters. Additionally, he says the PLP's deputy leader and one of its candidates, Jerome Gomez, are reportedly also involved with the company. 
The decision by your government should never be influenced by any financial relationship that exists between the company seeking the permit and its paid consultants and attorneys. A coincidence that a foreign oil company decided to hire as consultants and pay handsomely the two most senior leaders of the official opposition and potentially two senior leaders of the executive branch of the government in which they are seeking to drill for oil. Fellow Bahamians, you must decide before the election whether you find acceptable or unacceptable such an extraordinary and potentially blatant conflict of interest by our opponents on one of the most momentous decisions this country will ever make. Mr. Ingram says he has no such conflict of interest and his quest is to put Bahamians first, something Mr. Christie, in his view, didn't do. A government led by me will not agree to any drill for oil in the Bahamas until all necessary and appropriate regulations are in place and until we are fully and competently in a position to regulate such activity so as to protect our environment and that of the world's ocean beyond from harmful and risky activity in our country and in our waters. I am not unmindful of what happened in the Gulf off the coast of Louisiana just two years ago. Mr. Ingham then turned to the government's efforts to provide relief for Bahamians struggling to pay mortgage or those who have either lost their homes or in the process of losing them. He says they have caused the central bank to meet with clearing banks to come up with the best method to assist. We propose for consideration the introduction of a grace period, that is a period of up to two years, when you pay no principal at all, if you were in that position, that the government would contribute up to 50% of the arrears and interest payments that will be made directly to lending institutions up to a predetermined amount and the agreement by lending institutions to forgive or for them to eat the other portion of the outstanding unpaid interest. Speaking on the matter of national defense, Mr. Ingham suggests the PLP has copied the FNM's plan. He referenced the announcement of the country's largest upgrade to the defense force in history, outlined in Manifesto 2012, and how the idea was virtually cut and paste from their proposal with manipulation of figures to make it appear different. Specifically for Grand Bahama, two new government departments will be moved to the island, Maritime Affairs and the Department of Local Government. Grand Bahama would also become a major hub in the Bahamas for marine and maritime services and industrial development. Also a major logistics venture for the island, the nation's second city would also feature prominently on the economic and trade mission Mr. Ingham says he intends to lead to Brazil and Latin American early in his new term. Infrastructural development for East and West Grand Bahama, expanded access to quality health care and greater education and training opportunities are all a part of the manifesto. Well, DNA leader Branville McCartney also expressed his party's view on the proposal for oil drilling in the country. His response came as he was a guest on the ZNS radio talk show, Immediate Response, today. The oil is something that both governments have been very, very quiet on. and I, They've been doing a disservice to our country. Uh, we now found out that um, Mr. Perry Christie is the consultant to the company that's uh, doing the drilling and um, we've now heard the Prime Minister say that um, if the FNM becomes a government there will not be, there will be no drilling for oil well the fact of the matter is permits have been issued uh, and permits are now up for renewal and we need as when we become the government the DNA will ensure that the Bahamian people are very very much involved in this process that is their resource that is not the PLP's resource, or the FNM's resource, or the DNA's resource. That can be a total uh, life changer uh, for this economy. The opposition Progressive Liberal Party introducing its blueprint for national development to Grand Bahama last night at a mass rally in Freeport. Shashina Roll has that story. Once the leader of the Progressive Liberal Party made his way through a thick crowd of supporters, the Right Honorable Perry Christie made one thing clear. He said when he returns to Grand Bahama on Saturday, he has an announcement to make regarding FNM candidates Peter Trunquist and Norris Bain. Tell them I'm coming back Saturday night. And especially Norris. I want to remind him what he said to the PLP candidates committee.
I want to remind him what he said about me sitting in my home. I want to remind him what we did for it. Christie also lashed out at the governing party for recent charges made regarding the alleged use of holograms to make the crowds at PLP rallies appear larger than they really are. Polls are flooding into FNM headquarters. Everyone is saying the gold rush is a gigantic rush. So Ingram turn around and say, all of you, that's an illusion. A hologram, that's what they call it. A camera trick. Well, that really explains Ingram's behavior to the people of the Bahamas. Mr. Christie said this probably explains why Grand Bahama was neglected. He noted that with unemployment at an all-time high, a mortgage crisis, a record national debt, millions of dollars in spending, and a decline in tourism numbers, he doesn't understand what the FNM has delivered. Showing supporters the PLP's blueprint for governance for the next five years and beyond, Christie said his team has put together a plan which deals with the issues plaguing this nation. Challenges like securing our borders, creating new industries, expanding tourism, financial services, fishing, agriculture, mariculture, the arts and entertainment and culture, helping homeowners and so much more. And as for Grand Bahama, he said the PLP has special plans for this island. We're going to start with a new ministry in Grand Bahama to bring intense focus to turning this economy around. We are going to cut departure taxes at the airport and the harbor. We're going to cut hotel taxes too. We're going to promote local entertainment and markets festivals and provide incentives for airlifts and charters. Shoshina Roll, ZNS News. The Democratic National Alliance is laying the blame for the country's national D-grade average squarely at the feet of successive governments. During a rally last night in Camp Road, the DNA says there have been no improvements in education for two decades. Carla Palmer tells us Bramble McCartney says both leaders of the PLP and FNM are at fault. We are living in a society that education has lost its appeal among our children. I blame them, Ingram and Christie, for our children's educational woes. Leader of the Democratic National Alliance, Branville McCartney, says a vote for the DNA is a vote for progress. With the national average a D, Mr. McCartney says too many of our children are graduating from high school unable to read or write. He's promising if the DNA becomes the government to revamp and modernize the educational system. Our most precious resources are not the roads, you know. They're not the airport. It's not our cars or our clothes or our jewelry. Our most precious resource is not tourism. It's not fishing or banking. Our most precious resource is our people and our children in particular. With the lack of education closely associated with crime, the DNA leader feels he has a solution to the problem. We will introduce the Bahamas National Service, which will be desperate, which is desperately needed in this country. Where persons unemployed and not furthering their education will be a part of the service. This will become a reality under the DNA. We will take these young men off the blocks where they are very much idle and put them in this program where they will be productive. Carla Palmer, ZNS News.